Hey everyone, this video is on the intensity of light. As a reminder, in the wave model of light, intensity is directly proportional to the square of the wave's amplitude. So for a given light, if we double its amplitude, we'll expect the intensity to increase by four times. Mathematically, this is expressed as the power of light divided by the area over which the light is shining on. So P divided by A. Now, assuming the light source is projecting in every direction, modeling the shape of a sphere, we can substitute area by the formula for the surface area of a sphere, which is 4 pi r squared, where r is the distance of the sphere from its center, where the light source is projected from. So in this diagram, if we were to measure the intensity at this given point, which is r meters from the light source, we'll take the initial power of the light source, p, divided by 4 pi r squared. Of course, r here will be in meters. The unit for intensity is related to this formula. Recall that the SR unit for power is watts or joules per second. And since we're dividing by the area over which the light is shining, the unit for intensity will be watts per meter squared, or we can write this as joules per second per meter squared. Again, the units watts and joules per second are equivalent in physics. This diagram clearly shows the relationship of light's intensity and the distance over which it's projected. As you can see, the same light source, as it travels away from the initial source, it scatters over an increasing area. At distance r, the area is represented by exactly one square. When this distance doubled to 2r, we can see that the area is increased by 4 times, to 4 squares. And following the same pattern, when the distance increases by 3 times, to 3r, we can see that the area over which the light is projecting increases by 9 times, to 9 squares. However, what you need to keep in mind is that as light is propagating from r to 2r, and then to 3r, and so on, the actual power of light, which is the energy transferred per second, remains the same, assuming we are not changing the light source. So if we keep power constant, only the area or the surface area over which the light is projecting should be changing. If we are modeling the propagation of light as a sphere, the intensity is the power divided by 4 pi r squared, where again r is the distance at which we're measuring the intensity from the source of light. So in the numerator, my power is constant. In my denominator, the value of the surface area is changing. As the light is traveling away from the source, this area is increasing, as you can see in the diagram. Since the intensity of light, or any wave, is inversely proportional to the square of the distance at which its intensity is being measured, this principle is known as the inverse square law of intensity. We can also write the power in terms of the intensity times by the surface area, which is 4 pi r squared. Now keep in mind that power is constant at any given points over which the light is propagating. So we can also write down i1 times by 4 pi r1 squared, which is the power at point 0.1. This should be equal to i2, the second intensity, times by 4 pi r2 squared. Again, this is the expression for the power at a second point. The power at these two points should be equal, which is why we can write the following equation, equating the two expressions that includes the intensity and the distance away from the source. We can then cross out 4 pi on both sides as the same value to obtain the final expression that's provided in the Nessa data sheet which is intensity 1 times by the square of the distance at that point should be equal to the intensity at the second point multiplied by the distance at the second point squared. This expression is always true for the intensity of light or any sort of wave, assuming the power coming from the source of the wave is kept unchanged. Let's go through two examples using the inverse square law. A light bulb produces 100 joules of energy every 5 seconds. So this is our energy of 100 joules, and this is the time over which we are measuring the energy. So straight away, we can calculate the power by dividing the energy by the time. So 100 joules divided by 5 seconds, which gives us 20 
joules per second, or we can write this as watts as well. We need to calculate the power first before we can find the intensity of light measured at 6 meters from the light bulb. So recall that the intensity of light is equal to the power of light divided by the area or the surface area on which it's projected. Uh, the area in this case for light bulb can be modeled as a sphere. So this area will be the surface area of the sphere, which is 4 pi r squared. And the power, as we found earlier, is 20 watts. And this is divided by 4 pi. And r is the distance at which we're measuring from the source of light, which is light bulb. So this number here will be 6 meters squared. This gives a, a value for intensity at this distance of 0 0.0442. And the unit here will be either watts per meter squared, or we can write down as joules per second per meter squared. The intensity of a radial signal is 0 0.12 watts per meter squared at 60 meters from a small transmitter. What is the intensity of the signal 4 meters from the transmitter? So for this question, we are not dealing with light. However, a radial signal is a form of radio wave, which is also a type of electromagnetic wave the same type of wave that light is classified as. For this radio signal, we are measuring its intensity from the same source, which is the transmitter. This tells us we can assume that the power or the rate of energy transfer for this radio signal is kept constant. And that's why we can use the equation of I1, R1 squared is equal to I2, R2 squared the equation for the intensity and the distance from the source at two different points. So I1, we can say this is 0 0.12, and the distance for this intensity is 60 meters. Uh, we have to square this, and this is equal to the second intensity of I2, which is what we are trying to find, multiplied by the second distance, which is 4 meters squared. Since we are measuring the intensity at a closer distance of 4 meters, we would expect the intensity to be greater than the initial intensity of 0 0.12 watts per meter squared. So the intensity here will be 0 0.12 times by 16 squared in the numerator divided by 4 squared in the denominator. This gives an intensity of 1.92 watts per meter squared. I want to spend a brief moment elaborating the relationship between intensity and energy. As we already discussed, Power, by definition, is the rate of energy transfer. So mathematically, it's the energy divided by the time, so E over T. Now, since we know intensity is equal to power over the area, we can substitute the power in terms of energy and time. And this is how we will get the intensity is equal to energy divided by area and time. We can rearrange this expression to make energy the subject which gives us energy equals the intensity multiplied by the area multiplied by the time over which we're measuring the energy. Let's look at how we can use this equation in a question. Light of intensity 4 watts per meter squared is projected over a 5 meter square area. So here we're given the intensity and we're given the area over which this intensity is measured. We want to calculate how much energy is transferred in this given area in 30 seconds. So this is the time. As we previously explained, energy is equal to the intensity multiplied by the area multiplied by the time. The intensity measured here is 4 watts per meter squared, and this is over a 5 meter square area, and we are measuring the energy transfer over 30 seconds. So we will get 600 joules of energy transferred in this exact area of 5 meters squared in total time of 30 seconds. This concludes the video on the intensity of light. Hey everyone, if you found this video helpful, smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Want even more? Become a Patreon member for early access to videos, exclusive Discord discussions about questions on chemistry and physics, and live preparation sessions for your exams. Don't forget to head over to our website for topic tests and practice exams to further improve your understanding and learning.